Or if you turn to Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. And we're going to start in verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in Jehovah with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. For thus saith Jehovah that created the heavens, God Himself that formed the earth and made it, He hath established it, He created it not in vain, He formed it to be inhabited. I am Jehovah, and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I, Jehovah, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of the graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I, Jehovah? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say, In Jehovah have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come. And all that are incensed against them shall be ashamed. In Jehovah shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Yeshua, Jehovah, we just come to you this afternoon, Yah, and I pray. I pray for your Kodesh Ruach, your unction. And I pray, Yah, that this word that is given, Jehovah, that will encourage our hearts. That we know, Jehovah, that we have not believed on thee in vain that you have not created the heavens and the earth in vain, and that your salvation is forever. It is world without end, time forever, Jehovah. And I pray, Yeshua, you help us to stand firm in thee in these last days and to strengthen ourselves and the glory in thy precious name. For in thee, Yeshua, we have the victory. I pray, Yeshua, Jehovah, in thy precious name, so be it. So here in Isaiah chapter 45, the promise of salvation, eternal salvation, world without end, is to Israel. In verse 17, Isaiah 45, but Israel shall be saved in Jehovah with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end Israel is the is to Israel is the promise given it's to Israel that protection and salvation is promised so we have the promises here is to Israel and what is the church the ecclesia it is Israel and it says ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end then it goes on. Only his saints are given an everlasting salvation. We shall not be ashamed nor confounded. Ion, world without end. Yeshua is King of kings and Lord of lords. In Isaiah 45, verse 18, it says, For thus saith Jehovah that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am Jehovah and there is none else. He says that over and over. That I am Jehovah. I am the Savior. And there is none else. Alright? It's for us to understand. It's for us to understand that only in Yeshua is there salvation. Only for His people is there salvation. Yeshua is in control. Yeshua is sovereign. And so is His people. We are never conf 
conquered though it seems because the way the world is run by the children of Satan and the treachery that goes on that we lose that we're, that we're brought so called uh, under their power but we're not under the world's power we're under the authority and kingdom of Christ during this last week, I, I preached on Artsakh how they've never been conquered. And they were betrayed by their own leaders. They're betrayed by the powers that be. But the Christians there in Artsakh will never be conquered. They will never be taken over. They will live free forever. All saints, any part of the earth, will live free. This, these verses mark this chapter down. Because these are the promises He gives to Israel. These are the promises, the same promises apply to the ecclesia of the church. We're more than conquerors through Him. In Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7, it says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Jehovah, do all these things. What did He say? What did Yeshua say? He creates light. He creates the darkness. He makes the peace. And He creates the evil, the war. Everything that happens on the earth, whether peace or war, whether light or darkness, whether good or evil, Jehovah is in control. Yeshua is in control. He says here, He says, I, Jehovah, do all these things. If He's the one doing it, ask yourself. He starts it. He, he brings it to pass. Don't you think he, he's, a, he's in control? He doeth all these things whether you're going to have war or whether you're going to have peace, whether you're going to have light or whether you're going to have darkness, it's all of His hand. And He says all throughout here that to trust in Him, it's in verse 15, Verily, it says in verse 15, Verily thou art a God that hideth thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. They shall be ashamed and also confounded all of them that they shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. Then in verse 17 where we began, But Israel shall be saved in Jehovah with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. Time without end. We're not the ones who are going to be ashamed. We're not the ones who are going to be confounded. We're not the ones who are going to lose. If God be for us, who can be against us? Yeshua makes the peace. He creates the evil. I, Jehovah, do with all these things. When war comes, it is because Yeshua brought it. When peace comes, it is because Yeshua brought it. What did Yeshua tell us and warn us about in the last days? Turn to the Gospel of Luke chapter 12. The Gospel of Luke chapter 12. It's all about the last days. What did Yeshua tell us about the last days? We're going to start in verse 4. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that they have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Fear Yeshua Jehovah. What did Yeshua say? I say unto you, my friends, I say unto you, my friends, this, be not afraid of them that kill the body. 
And after that, they have no more, they have no more power to do anything else to you. Yeshua says, But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. All of the last days, Yeshua says in Matthew 24, Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. He says here later, He says they're going to bring you to the synagogues and to the magistrates and powers. Take, take ye no thought, verse 11, how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. He'll protect us. I say this because the whole context of what he's talking about, fear, be not afraid of them that kill the body, has to do with when war comes. When war comes, you better be in Christ. When war comes, the only protection you have is if you're saved in Him. As we're going to read the rest of Isaiah 45. The protection is in Him. Isaiah 45, 17, But Israel shall be saved in Jehovah with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. Then he says, In Isaiah 45, verse 22, Look unto me, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. There is none else that can save you. None else. Yeshua warned us. He says in Isaiah 45, verse 7, I form the light and create darkness. He's sovereign. He says, I make peace and create evil. He makes peace. He makes war. He says, I, Jehovah, do all these things. He's in control. He's, he's sovereign. Yeshua says in Luke chapter 12, verse 4, And I say unto you, my friends, your friends with the King, your friends with Yeshua, Jehovah, be not afraid of them that kill the body. Why? Look at verse 6. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. And in another gospel, not one of them shall fall, or not one of them shall die. And he says in verse 7, But the, even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not therefore, Ye are of more value than many sparrows. You're of more value than many sparrows. If, if, if the sparrows don't die without the will of God, Yeshua says, don't fear, my friends. Don't fear them during war. Don't fear them when these times come. He's, Luke 12 is about the last days. He says in verse 8, Also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, the Chodesh Ruach, it shall not be forgiven. And then he went on, and I read those verses already. The last days, we know wars are coming. We know there's going to be civil wars. We know there's going to be major events happening. And Yeshua says, be not afraid. Be not afraid of them that can kill the body. But afterwards, they have no power to cast you into hell. But Yeshua says, I say unto you, fear Jehovah, fear Him only. 
were of more value than many sparrows. This is the truth that will bring us to this, the place of confidence where the Apostle Paul wrote about in Romans chapter 8. Turn to Romans chapter 8. Here's another encouraging verse. Romans chapter 8. And we're going to look at verse... And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called, that's the elect, according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, so that we might be the firstborn among many brethren. Yeshua is not afraid to call us his brother and his friends. Verse 30, moreover, when, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is He that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather than that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, or war, or sword. As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep to the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Yeshua, our Lord. We are predestinated to be conformed to His image. We're more than conquerors through Him that loved us and called us according to His purpose. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecutions or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Verse 37, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. There is nothing that will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Yeshua our Lord. We are more than conquerors through Him. Isaiah 47 or 45 Teaches us the same thing. It says in Isaiah 45, verse 17, But Israel shall be saved in Jehovah with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. And the Apostle Paul also quotes that verse. World without end. His kingdom is forever. His salvation is forever. Nothing will be able to separate us. Not death, not life, not angels, not principalities, not powers, not things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Yeshua, our Lord. We're more than conquerors through Him that loved us. As I preached a couple of weeks ago, I want to go back to this psalm. Because I preach this and it's a truth. Because this is where many people turn for their safety. And let me try to find the verse again. So, Psalm 146, verse 3. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom... 
There is no help. If all your hope, if all your strength, if all your power and all your trust is in man to save you, let me tell you something. You're going to be ashamed and you're going to be confounded. You're going to be in derision and you're going to be very, very miserable because there is no help from man. There is, and I preached that message, there is no help in Egypt. Nobody's going to come and save you. The only Savior, that, the only one that can save you is Yeshua, Jehovah. There is no Savior else beside Him. There is no God else beside Yeshua ha HaMashiach, Jehovah in the flesh. Jehovah Tseboeth is His name. Don't trust in the arm, of the arm of the flesh. It will fail you. There is no salvation except in Jehovah. He says, in verse 18, For the first sake, Jehovah, that created the heavens, God Himself that formed the earth and made it, He hath established it, He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am Jehovah and there is none else. Turn to Isaiah chapter 37. Isaiah chapter 37. And we'll look at verse 6. And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say unto your master, speaking to the king of Assyria, Be not afraid of the words that thou hast heard, wherewith the servants the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. And then what happens? He goes, and 185,000 of the Assyrians were killed by one angel. Jehovah protects us, Yeshua protects us. Turn to Isaiah again. Chapter 45, verse 19. I have not spoken in secret in the dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I, Jehovah, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. He doesn't say He's going to protect us in vain. He doesn't say He's, he's our Savior in vain. Trust only in Yeshua, Jehovah, not in man. Then it says there in verse 20, listen to this verse because it goes along what I've been preaching and teaching for for last years and months. In verse 20 it says, Assemble yourselves and come. Come out of her. Go ye out of her. Go out of her. That ye be not partakers of, her, of your plagues. This is about the second exodus. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together. Listen, who is he speaking to? Ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. He's talking to Israel. He's saying, assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. This is the second exodus. The call is going to is going to come. And as I said last week, once the Holy Spirit gives liberty, the word is of the second exodus to come out of all these nations, all these governments, these satanic run governments, come out of them to where we're going to draw near together and we're going to assemble. Just like the children of Israel came out of Egypt, assembled on the day of Passover, and in their ranks, in their armies, armed, they came out. The whole multitude came out of Egypt. He's speaking to us in the last days. Just like Luke chapter 12, Yeshua said, Don't be afraid of them. 
You're going to come out of them. Don't be afraid of Pharaoh that pursued you and was drowned in the Red Sea when Jehovah fought for you. It's Jehovah who goes before us. And Jehovah, as I preached last Sabbath, He shall be your rear ward, your rear guard. He protects us. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. This is the second exodus. Ye that are escaped of the nations. Who's Isaiah the prophet speaking of? All of Isaiah 45 is about Israel, about Yeshua, Jehovah, who is the one and only Savior. It's about Israel, mine elect. Look at verse 3 of Isaiah 45. We haven't read it. It says, And I'll give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, Jehovah, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am Jehovah, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. He goes on. All of Isaiah 45 is about His sovereignty. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Jehovah, do all these things. He's speaking to Israel, His elect. Then He says in verse 20, Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. He says in verse 21, Tell ye, and bring them near. You're coming. You're going forth. You're, you're bringing them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I, Jehovah? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Gather yourselves, assemble yourselves, and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. Turn to Zechariah chapter 10. This is the promise in the last days to Israel. Because Jehovah says He's going to scatter them. And then He says at the end of days, He will gather Israel, His elect, in one. Yeshua says, and in that day... There shall be one shepherd, and I've preached this also, and one sheepfold. Yeshua said, other sheep I have that are not of this fold, physical Israel, them I must also bring, that there may be one, one shepherd, one sheepfold, one gathering together. It's all about the second exodus. Zechariah chapter 10, and let's start in verse 1. Ask gave Jehovah rain in the time of the latter rain. So Jehovah shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. For the idols have spoken vanity, and the diviners have seen a lie, and have told false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore they went their way as a flock. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats. For Jehovah Sabaoth had visited his flock, the house of Judah, and had made them as his goodly horse in the battle. Out of him came forth the corner, out of him the nail, out of him the battle bow, out of him every oppressor together, and they shall be as mighty men. This is a prophecy of the last day saints fighting. What, did the, what does the prophet Daniel say? The Antichrist makes war on the saints. And the saints shall be strong and do exploits. That word exploits means military exploits. War acts. Things done in war. Battles fought. And then it says, And they shall be, in verse 5 of Zechariah 10, And they shall be as a mighty, as mighty men which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle. And they shall fight. This is where 
once the Holy Spirit gives liberty, and once He says, Come out of her, my people, and Jehovah lifts up the banner and He hisses to the ends of the earth for His saints to be gathered together into one place, into the wilderness, for time, times, and half a time. Once that happens, it's not like for the last thousands of years where Christians, they're not commanded to fight and to put down these evil governments. The day is going to come where we will fight. And like I preached last week, loose the bands from around thy neck. These bands have been there and we were sold for nothing and we shall be redeemed without price. This word is coming near. This message is to encourage you, to let you know that Yeshua, Jehovah, will fight for us. But Israel shall be saved in Jehovah with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. And in the days of these last kingdom, last kings, Yeshua, Jehovah, shall set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. It is the stone that the King Nebuchadnezzar seen, the image of gold. A stone cut out, made without hands. It was cast and destroyed all those kingdoms. It says here in Zechariah chapter 10, verse 5, And they shall be as mighty men which tread down their enemies in the mire of the street in the battle, and they shall fight because Jehovah is with them. Jehovah is with us. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. If God be for us, who can be against us? Shall famine or war, powers or principalities, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Nay, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Zechariah chapter 10 verse 5 says in the last days, And they shall fight, because Jehovah is with them, and the riders of horses shall be confounded. And I will strengthen the house of Judah, that's Israel, the Jews. And I will save the house of Joseph. I have more on this coming. Who is the house of Joseph today? You're going to be surprised. Who is the house of Joseph today? The Holy Spirit's been showing me many things on this. And I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to place them, for I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off. For I am Jehovah their God, and will hear them. And they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their heart shall rejoice as through wine. Yea, their children shall see it and be glad, and their heart shall rejoice in Jehovah. Listen to verse 8. I will hiss for them and gather them, for I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. The second exodus, when the Holy Spirit calls for the sheep, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, for Judah, and for the house of Joseph, and they of Ephraim, they'll be like mighty men, and they shall fight, because Jehovah is with them, and He fights for us. He says in verse 8, I will hiss for them, and gather them, for I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. And I will sow them among people, and they shall remember me in far countries. And they shall live with their children and turn again. I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt. And gather them out of Assyria. And I will bring them into the land of Galid. And Lebanon and place shall not be found for them. People say, where is the gathering in the wilderness? Where is where we're protected for a time, times, and half a time? When reading this, I see that we're gathered in Galid. We're on the other side, the eastern side of Jordan. 
and Lebanon were around that whole area. Gilead is mine, Jehovah says. Why do we gather there? Because when the children of Israel were gathered out of Egypt in the first Exodus, where did they gather to? They gathered to Gilead, where Moses went up in the mount and he was only able to see the promised land afar off. And they did, he couldn't go and cross Jordan because he smote the rock in anger. And that rock was Christ. The same place the children of Israel went into the promised land was the same place where John the Baptist was baptizing when they went across the Jordan River and the Jordan River was stopped. Joshua was commanded to set up stones, 12 stones, one for every tribe, and leave them in the river of Jordan and also take 12 stones with them where they went to Gilgal. I preached on that years ago. And when John the Baptist was preaching there in the Jordan River, everything starts there at the entrance to the Promised Land. The first Exodus was there. Christ started His kingdom from there. He begins from the very beginning. He starts to gather Israel. They rejected Him. They knew not the time of their visitation. So then it's postponed for the second Exodus. He'll gather them, all Israel... All of God's elect, He'll gather them again. Where? Here to that same place in the Jordan River where John the Baptist says, But I say not in, within yourselves that we, that Abraham is our father. For verily I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. It's His children that He gathers together from all the ends of the earth. And what does he do? He gathers them. Zechariah chapter 10. Verse 10. And I'll bring them again also out of the land of Egypt. And gather them out of Assyria. And I'll bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon. And place shall not be found for them. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction. And shall smite the waves in the sea. Why does he do that? Because he smote the Red Sea. And he smote the Jordan River. The second exodus also has this going on. He shall pass through the sea with affliction. And shall smite the waves in the sea. And all the deeps of the river shall dry up. They passed the Red Sea on dry land. They crossed the Jordan River on dry land. Where the soles of the feet of the priest bear the Ark of the Covenant. They set up twelve stones. Stones of memorial to preach and tell and witness of the future day that the children of Israel will cross here again one day into the promised land. And the pride of Assyria shall be brought down and the scepter of Egypt shall depart away. And I will strengthen them in Jehovah and they shall walk up and down in his name. Say Jehovah. We are about to be strengthened with strength like we've never known. The Christians, the saints of this world have been sold without money. We're, as you would say, we're in Assyria. We're in Egypt. There's our types and figures of where we are throughout the governments of this evil, satanic run world. But we are going to be strengthened in Jehovah. And we are going to walk up and down in His name, say Jehovah. Like I said last Sabbath, the Holy Spirit is putting a word, but I don't have liberty to say it as of yet. But I'm telling you, this word of the second Exodus, it is coming near. It is coming near. Jehovah, we will walk up and down in His name. Turn back to Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45, and we'll read verse 21. Tell ye, bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I, Jehovah? 
And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior, there is none beside me. What did Yeshua say? And if I, the Son of Man, be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Look, looking unto Yeshua, the author and finisher of our faith. No sign shall be given this evil generation. But the sign of the prophet Jonah. And as Moses lifted up the serpent. And they looked upon that to be saved. Yeshua says, look unto me. And be saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. Isaiah 45 verse 23. I have sworn by myself the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness. And shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall swear. The time's going to come. When no more. Wicked rulers. Are going to be. Ruling over. God's people. His saints. His elect. His church. His ecclesia. The true Israel. Come out of her. Come out of her. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt. Pharaoh was no more their king. Who was their king? Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Eloet Sabaoth. He's our king. What did the apostles say in the day of Pentecost? Whom shall we obey, whether God or man? We there is no king. We have no king but Yeshua. This is the call. This is what's coming. Look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. And we glory in His name. Alright, let's pray.